And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and I gotta be honest, not a fan of rap or opera for that matter, but um, here's a game called Rap Gods, and when I first saw this, I was like, oh, nah, theme doesn't really do anything for me, and I didn't really want to play a game that makes me rap. I've done that once in my life, and it was incredibly uncomfortable, I think, for everybody involved, but this actually isn't like that, and I read more about it. This game's been getting some buzz lately. Oh, it's a, it's actually a Euro-style game in which you're trying to score points in various ways. Well, that's interesting. It's a theme I definitely haven't seen done in that way before, so I gave it a whirl, and let's take a look. In this game, at the beginning, each player is going to draw some city cards, two city cards, and you're going to pick one of them to be your home city. So once you pick your home city, so let's say you pick Miami, it's going to show you your starting stats here that you have. And you're going to have these stats in three different categories, which are swag, money, skills, and streets. So you can see if you start with Miami, you'll start with five, one, and zero. and here, five, one, and zero, I'll put my cubes. And you're gonna keep track of those going around the board. The game's gonna take place over three rounds. In this game, they're called albums. And each round consists of five turns, which are called tracks, and those are kept track of there. The game is about scoring the most points, shown here in denominations of one, five, and 25. And to get these points, you're gonna be playing cards to give you points, but you're also trying to accomplish goals. Each player is going to get one of the wrappers in the game. You'll start with two, pick one. Some will give you points for each. This one, for example, gives you four points at the end of the game for each green card you have. They have a special ability that you can use once per album, and players have a piece that they're going to place on the card to show that you've used it, that album. Sometimes there's an end game goal, this particular rapper doesn't have one, but this rapper here, for example, if they have 35 or more on the microphone stat at the end of the game, which is skills, sorry, you'll get an extra 15 points. So sometimes they don't have one of the bonuses here, and sometimes they have multiple bonuses, and they all have some sort of special ability. As I said, there are three albums, rounds of the games that are being played, and each has a different set of cards. You have come ups, cards which are placed face up here next to the board, and then you have album cards. Each round players are going to have five of these cards, and on your turn you will either draw a new album card from the top of the deck and add it to your hand, or you can discard three cards from your hand and take one of the come ups cards here. Then players will have a chance to play one of these cards. Now these cards often, you'll notice they're different color cards, and that's because the, those will count for bonuses and things at the end of the game. Since someone in this game, for example, picked Atlanta, whoever has the most yellow cards at the end will win Atlanta and get 10 points. Um, and then of course there's those bonuses on the wrappers. When you play these cards, you simply score whatever it says. So for example, if I play this card, playing my song in the subway, I'm gonna get two points, and then I move up on the swag track two spaces. Occasionally there is a prerequisite. So for example here, this gives me three points and three on the road stat here, but I need to have five on that stat to begin with. Here if I want this, I need to already have uh, a stat that is five or higher in my swag skill. And as the albums go by, these prerequisites can get pretty high. This gives me nine points and eight money, but I need to have 26 here on, the, on that skill. Now, a lot of them don't have that on them. A lot of them have no prerequisites at all. For example, this just gives me 12 points and no skill increase at all, and there's no prerequisite. Then there are the red cards. The red cards are different. You'll notice they have negative numbers on them. So here on the worst dress list at the award show, something I would probably win, you give this to another player. Well, you, you try to give it to another player, and then you're going to have a beef with that player. So when that happens, both players are going to roll their dice. Each player starts with a die of their color, but the person who's playing a card also rolls the red die. So let's say white's attacking green. They roll these dice, and you pick the single highest dice. So 
I'm sorry, white's attacking green. So white has a three, so they win. When that happens, they give this card to the opponent, which is going to make you lose points and lose skill. And you also get uh, a red beef cube. So players are going to be taking turns doing this until each player has done it five times. Now these cards, the ones you discard cards for, are almost always better than the other ones. This one here gives two points and two on that skill, but they get really good as time goes by. Like this one here has eight points and eight on that skill, seven points and 12, and they have no prerequisites except you have to discard three cards to get them. As players increase their skills, as you cross these tokens, which are placed here at the beginning of the game, you'll flip them over and you get a token that you can use. This one, for example, I can discard on my turn to draw an extra card. And that's what that one does too. This one gives me plus three on any of these wrap resources that are out there. And then a couple of them you can play when you're fighting in a beef contest to give you plus two. And this can be done after the die has been rolled. So basically, you, know, you draw some more cards, you're gonna change out the decks of cards between albums, and then at the end of the game, you're gonna take the points that you've collected over the course of the game, plus you'll get points for different things here. These will change from game to game, except this one's always in every game. Whoever has the most beef cubes gets a champ, and these are all worth points. And then whoever has the cities, whatever the, that city you looks for, so like Miami, whoever's highest on the swag skill gets 10 points. And then you'll look at your wrapper cards and the bonuses that you get for those. Most points is the winner. Now some of the components here are fantastic. I really like these, they're just wooden piece here, moving on the album and the track, that's really neat. The cubes moving around the board, well they're cubes, one thing I enjoyed that this game did, which I thought was neat, was once you pass 30, once you go all the way around the board, you'll replace your cube with a bigger cube, and that's just a neat way to know that it's 30. Um, there's a starter piece here, which is a big metal coin, and I really like the points, so they're called plaques in this game. This they look good, they have a good feel to them, they have that metallic ink on them, they're great. The cards I'm less excited about, the graphic design, I mean, there's, there's a certain style of artwork, which is what it is. The graphic design is okay. Um, it's just, you know, it is what it is. Uh, there's going to be, obviously, there's, these are all very stereotypical cards. And, you know, I'm not going to dwell into this too much, but some of these things, uh, I was a little... I guess I wouldn't, you know, it's hard for me to get in a character doing some of these because this is a baby mama drama. It just, it felt like some of these cards kind of play into these stereotypes, which I guess is the point of the game. Um, but I just, I don't know. This, this theme is, you know, not necessarily dwelling with me, but this is what the game is full of, all this artwork here. And it definitely, uh, there's, I think, I think every single card in the game is different. So this head game has a very distinct style to it. I don't know that it's my style. Like the graffiti all over the board is, I don't actually don't have a problem with it. I, I would have faded it out a little bit because the board's a little bit busy. But I do like how this looks like a record. I do like the tracks. There's, so some parts of this I really do like. Other parts of it, I mean, uh, like I like these. The artwork and stuff, I just wasn't as big of a fan of. I have a few small problems with the game per se. I don't really care for the take that aspect of it. Uh, the beef cards that you play. Yes, if you attack someone, you have two dice. So you have an advantage. And if you have the tokens, even more so an advantage. But it's a swing, right? And it's a swing where instead of having six points, I mean, I could even do it and lose. So there's that Disadvantage, if I am playing, I'll very rarely do it to somebody else because I don't want to take a chance of me losing out on it. Uh, but I know you get the points at the end of the game, whoever has the most beef cubes, and sometimes even like there's a, a one of the uh, actions is the first person to do it gets points. So there's, you know, you get a lot of points that way. Um, but, you know, I don't also mind it too tremendously because the game is about 45 minutes to an hour long. Not very long at all. So that, that in that kind of situation isn't so bad. Uh, also, I'm not convinced all the rappers are equivalent in their special abilities. And in fact, if I'm playing this game and you give me the two rappers and one has a great special ability and the other has end game scoring, I'll pick the end game scoring guy every time. The people who have end game scoring goals in this seem to be better and some of the end game scorings feel better than other ones. Not a huge deal, but it definitely felt like that end game scoring goal stuff can bring in a decent amount of points. The theme itself, uh, 
you know, some parts of it, you know, if it wasn't designed by who the person who did design it, I might feel a little uncomfortable with some of it. I mean, some of the, the cards themselves, I was like, oh, you know, and I'm not going to stand up and be shouting this stuff in the middle of a gaming group. But there is this story aspect to it. As you play the cards, you're placing them in front of you, and that's the story of your life. I, in one game, I became a movie star. I mean, why not? And, you know, it, it is, there's definitely a progression there. But the gameplay is pretty simple. You're playing a card, discarding the card, and then um, uh, drawing another one, playing it, and you that's really simple. You're moving up on stats, getting points, moving stats, getting points, and having an occasional beef with somebody else. In fact, it might be too simple for many people, but I don't mind that at all because of the length of the game uh, and how easy it was to get into, and I thought the game offered some decent decision making because, yes, you have five cards to play. Yes, I don't know what to do with any of them. Should I discard three to take this? But I'm also looking at the end game goals based on cities, the end game goals on my wrapper, the you know the different achievements I'm trying to accomplish. So there's a little bit of that. What's everyone else doing and how you play them out? And sometimes I pick the card because I just like the story it told. Uh, I uh, put my mom's bills in my name. That's right, I'm a good son. That's why I played that card. So there's a bit of all that mixed together. And this could be considered almost a gateway game because I think a lot of people are going to get this based on theme, uh, expecting like me maybe one game and finding another game in here, a game that's quite good and that's simple and easy to get into. And whether they progress to more uh, complicated games doesn't matter. This is the kind of game that if someone said, I really like rap, I'd be like, well, you should try this game and they will enjoy it. The theme, the components are really well done. It, you know, the cards as you put out in the story, all that drives it home. It's not what we would call a soulless Euro. It, if anything, there's quite a bit of soul inside of it. And uh, because of that, I think that it's, I'm, I'm, I'm just pleased that games like this exist. I'm always ragging on, oh, the same old theme, the same old theme. This is not the same old theme. So I'm glad to see something like this being made and played. And again, I think the speed of the game certainly helps. A few problems with the rule book. The game doesn't say what to do if you have no cards that you can play. I'm assuming you just pass on your turn. But other than that, I really like the whole production in. It feels and looks a little bit like an indie game. And I think it's going to have a lot of appeal to segments of uh, folks in our society who don't often play board games. And how could I possibly say anything against that? A lot of fun. Check it out. Rap Gods. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved.